How bad is classified the Sentinel Crisis? Classified The Sentinel Crisis is a first-person shooter developed by Taurus Games and released as a budget title exclusively on the Xbox back in 2006. A PlayStation 2 port was supposedly in the works, but cancelled before ever being released. Why was it cancelled, you ask? Perhaps it was because the game was universally panned by critics. GameSpot scored the game a 5.4 out of 10, stating, The Sentinel Crisis would merely be a slightly below average console first person shooter if it weren't so short on content and terribly boring. IGN gave the game a 2.1 out of 10, noting, It's got boring gameplay, poor graphics, unremarkable sound, and only one short game mode. Sure, it's only 20 bucks, but it's not worth it. Finally, the official Xbox magazine scored the game a 2 out of 10, proclaiming, Classified the Sentinel Crisis couldn't flop much harder if it had gills and a hook in its chops. So is Classified the Sentinel Crisis really this awful? Let's take a look. Classified The Sentinel Crisis is fairly light on story, and the narrative is presented either over an intercom or brief in-game cutscenes. Basically, you play the role of Collins, and you are selected to perform the first test trial of a secret military weapon, the Sentinel Suit. This is like a strange mix of Master Chief and Sam Fisher, though Collins isn't half as cool as either of them. Your mission is to track down a rebel fighter named Carlo, who will assist you in locating the man who designed the Sentinel suit, Dr. Landau, who has been captured by a man named General Radovan. The entire adventure takes place in Eastern Europe, where General Radovan is a ruthless leader and Carlo is a freedom fighter. The missions themselves are structured in a very linear fashion, and getting lost is nearly impossible. There is almost always a specific objective displayed on the hood, the first being pieces of a radio antenna. Both the compass on the bottom of the screen and a floating indicator on the screen give a general idea of where your mission will end. Speaking of HUD, this also feels very much inspired by Halo. The upper left is a shield, which will regenerate after a few moments of inactivity. The lower left is a health bar, and the right side is your ammunition. This is all fairly standard stuff. What is unique is the gun itself. Rather than having a bunch of different weapons or being forced to select between two, your gun is all of your weapons. By collecting various upgrades, you add new capabilities. This includes your standard assault rifle, sniper rifle, shotgun, rocket launcher, grenade launcher, and minigun. While this sounds interesting on paper, it really doesn't function any differently than simply having six different weapons, so yeah. In addition to the master chief functions of the sentinel suit, there are a couple of splinter cell functions as well. The first being a night vision mode. There are a few specific missions requiring this, but it serves merely as a gimmick, rather than adding any sort of cool stealth gameplay. The next mode is a zoom mode. This does exactly what it sounds like, offering a zoom in exchange for slower movement. The final mode is a scan mode, which shows you where all of the enemies in an area are. This is just a quick scan though, and doesn't show enemy movement, just their location when you press the button. It works through walls too, which is neat, but I would have preferred a traditional radar. At least they tried. Moving on, after acquiring the two different pieces of the antenna, you are instructed to assemble the pieces on the roof of a nearby building, so you can contact the rebel leader, Carlo. If there's one thing classified the Sentinel Crisis does well, it's blending indoor and outdoor environments, mixing up the gameplay between close quarter combat and more sniper based assaults. After making your way up the crumbling building, you finally make contact with Carlo, who has clearly seen better days. After this, the game introduces a different kind of mission, where your goal is to clear out specific enemies rather than chase down different checkpoints. In this case, you need to use your sniper rifle to take down targets. Again, this is pretty standard FPS fare, but I appreciate the different objectives. After clearing the snipers and meeting at the extraction point, we finally meet Carlo, and he makes a deal, advising he'll help you find Dr. Landau if you assist him with taking down General Radovan. It is here we also realize Collins will never say a word, sort of like the D trilogy. From here, we are introduced to a third type of mission, the escort mission. After shooting your way through a nameless European village, you meet up with a rebel officer and then have to escort him back to the rebel base. He has a life bar at the bottom of the screen, and if he dies, you fail the mission. The rebel officer is also a bit dumb, so you have to hang back and snipe to keep him out of harm's way. 
Upon success, it's more checkpoint chasing, so let's use the break to talk about the actual controls. Thankfully, Classified the Sentinel Crisis uses the tried and true dual stick setup, as you would expect from a 2006 shooter. However, the game has a few problems, preventing this from feeling as smooth as other games of the time. The first problem is the lack of any sort of auto-aim or aim assistance. As good as analog sticks are, they just aren't a replacement for the precision a traditional mouse provides. Worse yet, it's nearly impossible to make any sort of small aiming corrections. Instead, you're forced to strafe left or right to make adjustments, which can be tricky if there are obstacles nearby, and is just awkward in general. Speaking of strafing, this is somewhat nerfed as well. As much as the Sentinel suit aids Collins in terms of health, it doesn't help him move left or right. There is a massive drop in speed when strafing compared to moving forward, and unless you are holding the left analog stick straight up, your movement is drastically slowed. The speed reduction is extremely jarring, and when combined with the sloppy aiming, really drags the overall control experience down. Moving on, we arrive at a common mission objective found through the rest of the adventure, grabbing explosives, which are casually lying around, and then attaching the explosives to specific targets so they can be blown up. This brings us to my second complaint with Classified The Sentinel Crisis, the first being the controls of course. The game reuses set pieces like nobody's business. Seriously, you'll run all the way through a level and then are forced to make your way all the way back. You'll often run through the same sections of a given map three or four times. This amounts to little more than padding, and backtracking through levels is never a good way to increase the length of a game. Anyway, after helping Carlo rescue the officer, he holds up his end of the bargain and will now assist you in locating Dr. Landau. It seems General Radovan may have kidnapped Dr. Landau to develop his own Sentinel suit, so you and the rebels now have a shared enemy. From here, Classified the Sentinel Crisis starts to feel a bit repetitive and stale. While the urban jungle has been replaced with a snowy mountain, the gameplay remains the same. Use your scanner to locate an enemy, snipe them from a safe distance, collect their ammo, and repeat. After making your way down the winding road, you arrive at a village, and then some tight corridor shooting. This brings us to my third major gripe with the game, the shotgun sucks. In every other first person shooter I've played, the shotgun is always the de facto weapon to use in close combat. Just aim somewhat near the enemy when in close range and blast them away. It should be a satisfying experience, but not here. Instead, the shotgun rarely kills an enemy on the first shot, unless the center reticle is dead on the enemy, and since the aiming is sloppy, this is a rare occurrence, which is a damn shame. As we near the halfway point, I should also note the game isn't terribly difficult. I'm playing this on the normal difficulty, and I'm really just breezing through it. Enemy fire just doesn't do much damage to your shield, especially if you stay back at a reasonable distance. However, the difficulty does spike during a few missions. Here, there are enemies with rocket launchers coming down a gondola lift. These are a surprise at first, as you just sort of die from random explosions. However, this is a nice change of pace, as you can't just scan and snipe, and instead have to keep moving to avoid the rockets. After this is another escort mission, only you are inside of a train car, on your way to Radovan's castle. Again, there is a life bar at the bottom of the screen, and you are forced to shoot everything in sight before they can do damage to your train car. This whole level is actually pretty awesome, and I wish more of this variety could be found throughout the game. After the train ride, we finally arrive at Radovan's castle, and must infiltrate the castle to rescue Dr. Landau. Unfortunately, Collins falls through a trap door, and a plot twist is presented. Dr. Landau has not been kidnapped, but is working for the enemy. You are then stripped of the sentinel suit while the mad doctor mocks you. Without the suit and the sweet gun, Collins is obviously vulnerable, and the game turns a little stealthy for a while. But first, for the only time ever in the whole game, you have to punch something to break it, and then the mission begins. I'm not sure if crouching is required to be quiet or not, but you need to sneak up behind enemies and then punch them. Eventually, you'll acquire a pistol, which kills any enemy in just two shots, making this one of the very best weapons in the game, ironically enough. After an extremely lengthy mission from the depths of the castle to the surface, we finally make our way to the sentinel suit and can resume normal play. 
Now that we know Dr. Landau is a traitor working with the enemy, it is determined we have to blow the whole compound to smithereens, assuring the Sentinel suit technology doesn't fall into enemy hands. Like when we blew up the bridge, we have to gather explosives, which are still just lying around, and then follow the checkpoints to attach the explosives to random items thrown about the level. At this point, I really started feeling comfortable with how to actually play Classified the Sentinel Crisis. The standard assault rifle is perhaps the most balanced weapon in the game. It shoots relatively quickly and can fire a ton of rounds before needing to be reloaded. When combined with the zoom function of the Sentinel suit, it really is the go-to weapon for most situations. After placing all six bombs, there is a time segment where you have to exit the castle before it blows up. I really don't care for this and it seems they could wait to detonate the bombs until after Collins is at a safe distance, but whatever. It does force you to act quickly and fight a bit more reckless than usual, so that's something, I guess. Sadly, we learn both Dr. Landau and General Radovan have also escaped the castle before things went boom, so our adventure moves forward. Carlo plans the next mission, assuming both enemies are at an industrial complex in a nearby town. As you can see, this mission takes place at night, and we finally get to put the night vision to good use. Unfortunately, there is a real missed opportunity here, because the enemies don't react any differently in the dark. They can see you just fine. As we are now about two thirds through the game, we reach what is easily the most difficult mission. Enemies are almost always well covered behind boxes, up high in buildings, or hiding behind tanks, while you are fairly exposed with few places to hide and snipe. The night vision doesn't help either as the screen is extremely grainy and it can be tough to make out enemies. While the increased difficulty and challenge is a welcome change to what has been a fairly easy game, I still feel like they really drop the ball when it comes to stealth. In this area, you are instructed to not do anything to sound the alarms, but the guards are all facing away from you, and they don't move, making completing the objective a foregone conclusion. Moving on, after making our way to the center of the industrial complex, we finally arrive at a sniping location and are ordered to take down General Radovan. Can you identify which target is the general? No, me either. After finally accidentally sniping the appropriate target, you have just taken down one of the two main bad guys in the game. Lame. The disappointment doesn't end there, however. The final firefight in the industrial complex is maddening. To escape the complex, you must make your way through two heavily guarded areas with a massive amount of enemies. This is made difficult for two reasons. First, there is nowhere for you to hide. Enemies will swarm you while guys with turrets and grenade launchers attack from the distance. Basically, you peek around the corner and lay down spray until your shield gets low. Then retreat so it can regenerate. The sniping utilized for the first half of the game simply isn't an option. The game gets very stingy with sniper ammo drops, and other than the ammo left to take down General Radovan, there simply hasn't been any throughout the castle missions or here in the industrial complex. It really limits your ability to tackle the challenge, and I resorted to charging deep into enemy territory, then retreating, hoping a few enemies would follow me so I could use the underwhelming shotgun to take them down when they came around the corner. In any case, after some trial and error working out the proper strategy, the mission comes to an end. It seems with General Radovan dead, his army has been severely weakened, and Carlo's rebel forces have begun to take back a nameless city. With one villain down, there is just one to go, and the final missions of Classified the Sentinel Crisis are presented. First is a standard follow the checkpoints, which take you to the roof of the rebel headquarters where a ton of enemies have landed. It seems taking down General Radovan didn't cause any issues with troop morale. After this is an escort style mission where you have to stop enemies from breaching the headquarters with rockets. As you can see, there is the standard life bar at the bottom of the screen offering some semblance of success or failure. Moving on, you must clear out a building filled with 25 enemies. This is actually one of my favorite missions in Classified the Sentinel Crisis as it plays to the strengths of the gameplay and minimizes some of the lesser points. First, you need to use the sniper module to take out enemies in the window. The combination of the scanner and the freedom to strafe left and right in a big open area makes this a relatively fun exercise. Next, you need to enter the building and clear out the remaining foes. Despite the building being fairly tall, it's logically laid out and the close quarter combat masks some of the precision deficiencies of the overall control scheme. After this, you need to take down a convoy of enemy tanks making their way towards the Rebel HQ. 
This finally puts the rocket launcher to good use, and using it is as satisfying as it should be. The large outdoor environments with plenty of nooks and crannies to hide in while sniping enemies and blowing up tanks is a ton of fun, and I wish more of the game could have incorporated these large scale battles. After defending the rebel base, it's time to go back on the offensive with a slog through a massive train yard and attach bombs to the enemy artillery. I'd prefer to just use the aforementioned rocket launcher at this point, but the developers seem to stick pretty firm to the sticky bomb gimmick. Upon returning to the rebel headquarters, we see Carlo dying on the battlefield, and he requests Collins assist the rebel army complete their mission, which is an escort mission. Like the other escort missions, the people you are saving aren't terribly bright, so you need to stay aggressive, killing enemies before the folks you are escorting drive right into an ambush. This brings us right into enemy territory, to a military complex of sorts, where Collins decides to barge in and start kicking ass. You'll make your way through large hangars and server rooms through some of the most congested areas in the game. I find it odd there is no narrative here and no mission objectives, but by this point you're just sort of trained to follow the radar, so it isn't an issue, but I find it odd nonetheless. At the end of the complex, we finally arrive at a deep underground lab where you meet face to face with Dr. Landau. It seems he has been developing a new and improved Sentinel suit, Generation 2. This acts as the game's final boss and is actually extremely confusing. There are two life bars at the bottom of the screen, and I don't know why. It's obvious Dr. Landau has regenerating shields, but I'm still not sure what the other one does or is. Anyway, the battle takes place in a large circular room. After doing enough damage to Dr. Landau, he'll retreat to regenerate his health as well as unleash a bunch of soldiers on you. These guys are packing some serious heat too, and dodging incoming rockets in the tight corridors while also taking them out is a real pain. You have to move quickly and kill efficiently as Dr. Landau will continue to unleash new enemy waves whether you cleared the previous wave or not. Needless to say, I died a lot here trying to figure out what on earth was going on. After finding a rhythm, I was able to achieve some success, and eventually Dr. Landau had no more goons to unleash on me, so I did what any sensible person would do, launched rockets at the guy until the game finally decided it was time for my victory. I still don't quite get why there are two life bars or why I was finally allowed to win, but whatever. I finally accomplished what only seven other people on the planet have done. I beat Classified the Sentinel Crisis. A brief cutscene then plays with the rebels cheering your victory, and then the credits roll. Like some other budget games I've reviewed, the credits are completely silent, which is weird, and the rest of the music isn't much better. Like the gameplay, the developers couldn't quite decide on a genre, and the result is a lackluster mix of high-tech and spy music. It's fine as background music, but isn't dynamic in any way. No matter what is happening on the screen, the music doesn't change, and it fails to add any sort of tension or drama to the gameplay whatsoever. On the flip side, the weapon sounds are all fine. A bit generic for sure, but they sound realistic enough and deliver a real sense of weight, helping the high-tech all-in-one gun feel powerful. And it drowns out the music too, which is a nice bonus. Graphically, things aren't much better. Classified the Sentinel Crisis does support anamorphic widescreen, which is a nice bonus for a budget title, and the 480p visuals do look fairly sharp. Even better, the frame rate is very smooth, staying at 60 frames per second for a majority, if not the entire, adventure. There are even some nice effects like the night vision and scan mode, some motion blur when a grenade explodes near you, and even some field of view effects when zooming in. However, even with all of these goodies, this is not a good looking game by any stretch. The art direction is basic at best, with generic set pieces throughout and a real lack of detail overall. In addition to the low polygon models are some uninspired textures. For a 2006 release, this really should look a lot better than it does. So, with all of that out of the way, we arrive back to the question asked at the beginning of the video. How bad is classified the Sentinel Crisis? Honestly, this is not a bad game. For starters, there are relatively few glitches to speak of. Other than the chat heads getting stuck on the screen in a few areas, Classified the Sentinel Crisis is fairly polished and complete. There are some bright spots as well, with the occasional escort missions offering a nice change of pace, and the stealthy segments after you lose the Sentinel suit mixing up the gameplay, forcing you to play fairly conservatively. 
However, these fun moments are few and far between. A vast majority of classified The Sentinel Crisis is repetitive, and despite a relatively short six and a half hour runtime, there isn't much here to hold your attention. The main character looks like a dork, the strafing is nerfed, aiming is less than precise, and the overall presentation is average at best. It makes most of the game feel like a giant waste of time, which is probably not what Taurus Games was going for. Unfortunately, I'm not sure Taurus Games actually knew what they were going for. There are some hints of stealth here and there, but these concepts are never fully realized. The scan mode is interesting, but it feels like a crutch for the weak AI. Enemies rarely charge at you, and certainly never move in any sort of intelligent way. They just stand there and wait for you to kill them. Without the scan, you'd likely not even realize you were near an enemy, until it was too late. Really, the only highlight here is the voice acting, and specifically Carlo. This guy is a riot, and listening to him bark out orders at the beginning or end of the missions is a treat. The Eastern Bloc accent along with the passion are the glue preventing this game from being a total disaster. He should have been put on the game's cover, rather than this generic logo. So what we are left with is a generic shooter with below average controls, a couple fun missions, a protagonist far less interesting than a side character, a smooth frame rate, a decent challenge at times, and no real bugs or glitches. Add all these together and classified, the Sentinel Crisis isn't all that bad, but it's also far from good. It's below average, and on a system with a ton of awesome shooters, it's probably best avoided.